Welcome to the Bald Eagle 242 YouTube channel. Today I have a Toro Z4220 with a Kohler Courage engine that has a cracked engine case. One common problem with this engine is the case bolts are installed at the factory without Loctite or lock washers on them. Because of this, the case bolts back out over time. When they back out far enough, they catch the underside of the flywheel and they either twist off the shear key or you end up with what I have here, which is a cracked engine case. You can see here where the owner tried to fix this cracked block with JB Weld and a C-clamp. He told me the engine will run, but it's knocking and leaks oil like crazy. I can assure you from the amount of oil underneath this mower, he's not wrong. If you have one of these engines, I'd recommend you pull the four bolts out of the plastic top cover and check these case bolts. Chances are at least one of them is loose. I'd recommend you back them all out one at a time, apply a little bit of blue Loctite, let it run down into the threads, and then retighten them. Fortunately, I've got another Kohler Courage motor sitting here that I've had in my shop for years to replace it with. Hopefully shaft sizes, length, and diameter are all the same. Anyways, let's get started here and get this engine swapped out. All right, we're gonna put a little persuasion on it. Hot diggity dog, that thing's gonna slide right off. Crazy mess, but uh, let's get this crowbar out of here before it falls on my toe. Well, I usually don't get that lucky. Sometimes I can spend half a day trying to get one of these off of these shafts. They get rusty and seized up, but I think this oil under here has really helped me in this case. There is one more pulley. Though. Hopefully it comes off just as easy, and it is. Wow. I'll take it. You can reach up in here take the tension off of that belt and just get that belt out of the way. And boy, that is lucky. That was my biggest fear on this job. But all that oil, I mean, that thing is covered in oil. And I think that helped me get this off of here. So make sure when you take that off, the top side of these is taller than the bottom. But make sure when you put this back on, this top side goes up. If you put it back on upside down, your belt's not gonna fit correctly. All right, looks like we can get to all the mounting bolts. Should have this thing off of here in a few minutes. I hope. Find that hard to believe they put a half inch in there and all the rest of them are 9 16 but there is a smaller bolt there. Tell all you young guys out there too, when I'm working over my head like this and I got progressive lenses, it's a challenge to see stuff over my head through the top of these glasses. You'll get old one day, if you're lucky. And speaking of uh, being lucky, if you guys are watching me work underneath this thing, it is supported on the other end with a clamp, and I also tie a strap around it. So don't think I'm working under here with this thing able to fall on me. I had somebody comment on that on one of the other videos, and I said I would mention it in the next one. But it is tied up with a strap, and it has a, a catch on it so it can't fall. All right, we got a nut on there. That's why it's not cooperating. 
that's where your starter ground wire hooks up so they got a nut on there holding the ground wire on for the starter And there we go. Remember that smaller bolt goes back in that front left. You gotta remember that, right? This one should be ready to come off now. I need to check the shafts to make sure the shafts are the same diameter and the same length. That one came off of a regular riding mower and I don't know if there's any differences or not, but we're about to find out. Moment of truth. My golly, I think we got a good match. All right, guys, I just drained the oil out of this thing off camera. Took the bolts out of the top here just so we can kind of get everything lined up. Let's see, I got to turn this thing all the way around when I put it on there, so. Finger mashing beast. You know, I think that's something I need to start doing is coming up with a name for all my projects. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hook this starter wire back up. Keep in mind when you're tightening these up too, they need to be torqued pretty tight, but you are tightening up into aluminum, so don't overdo it. All right, I got enough confidence in this thing to think it's gonna run. I'll go ahead and get this muffler back on here, and I am gonna pull the carburetor off of this thing and uh, get the carburetor cleaned up. I know it runs on starting fluid, but I'm pretty sure the carburetor's clogged up. I'll either clean this one or uh, swap the one off the other motor. I think we got enough carburetor cleaning videos on YouTube. I don't plan on showing that on video, but I'll get that done and we'll get back on this thing here. And my studs did work just fine for this muffler. I was worried I might not be able to finagle that thing up in there, but if you didn't watch the first part of the video, the original motor had bolts in it instead of studs. And one thing I noticed here, we got no choke hooked up. I guess the linkage, probably had to take all that off that other engine. And just like that, we got a clean carburetor. All right, I had to take the choke lever off that other motor. I'm surprised on these colors. There's not bolts other than the bolts that hold the air cleaner on or nuts that hold the carburetor on in addition to the bolts that hold the air cleaner cover on, but there are not. Show you guys here real quick if you haven't done this before, but this screw right here on this cable, that cable is what adjusts your choke. So what you want to do is get this about where you want it. Tighten this screw down, just snug it down because if you got to adjust it, you don't want it cranked down. And then work your throttle lever back and forth. And when you're on full choke or full throttle, this choke should be all the way closed. If it's not, pull this cable forward. That choke should just close. You don't want it to go too far you know, past that, but just put it right there and then tighten this screw down. That's how you get your carburetor linkage adjustment to match what your throttle's doing on the, on the dash or the side panel here. But there you go, that's full choke. That lever does have a little bit of a click in it, clicks right into place. And then when you turn it off to your run position, you're good to go.
All right, guys, gonna try to wrap this one up in a long day, but I'm hoping to get this done here. Remember when I took that off, I showed you that this has a long side and a short side. Don't forget when you put this back on, you put that longer side or taller side up. If you put it down, it puts your belt too close up underneath the mower and your belt's gonna rub. Oh yeah, and don't forget to put Eversees on this. There we go. All right, again, the long side up top. And then when you put your clutch back on, don't forget to plug it in. So plug that in before you do anything else. And again, it helps to see where your keyway's at before you slide it up there. At least get it in the general location. Your clutch here has a notch in it that lines up with these plates. This notch in this clutch lines up with the right here so the clutch doesn't spin. Sometimes that keyway can be fun to get it lined up. It spins real freely. But when it goes, it goes. Hopefully our bolt is somewhere handy. Here we go, put it right there where I couldn't miss it. This is your deck belt. This is your clutch to engage your deck, your blades. That one's easy to put on. Guys, we should be able to get that tightened back up. And next thing will be interesting to find out if these transmissions are good. I have no idea. Going a lot of off what the seller told me on this one. And so far, he's been honest with me. Happens every once in a while. And hopefully this motor fires up and runs good. You got a good impact here. You got electric or air. Just makes it a lot easier. You don't have to try to find something to hold that motor. Make sure everything's lined up there before we... Wires hooked up. I think that gets torqued to exactly that spec right there. I don't know what that is. But it'll hold. That should do it for down here. You know, one thing too with these residential mowers, it's interesting. There ain't a grease fitting on these things nowhere. You guys do any work on commercial stuff, it's just a lot beefier and a lot more access points for service. Let's get this thing down here and see what we got. shot a starting fluid, but let's see what it'll do on its own. Yeah, get some starting fluid. It ain't been primed yet. Alright, moment of truth here, guys. Let's see what we got. Need to adjust my choke a little bit. Got prime, but get it outside here and see what we got.
All right, guys, if you're still around at this point, you're obligated to subscribe to my channel and like this video. I got a lot more projects coming up over the next month or so. I'll be doing more videos and posting more of them on YouTube. If you enjoy this type of stuff, consider hitting that button. If you got comments, questions, put them down below. I try to answer all questions and comments that you guys want to put on there. I enjoy watching other channels. If you guys got a channel, let me know what it is. I'll check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time.